the world we dash, though we're rather short on cash. Hello YouTube! Today we are going to talk about Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. We all know his works, we all know their lasting impact, and blah blah blah. I don't want to spend my time teaching you guys something you already know, so I'm going to try and teach you something you probably didn't know. And today, that is that Mozart, while being a fantastic composer, was also something of a poet. Now there are definitely several reasons why he's known for being a composer and not a poet. One of which is that the vast majority of it really isn't very good, but it gives a really interesting insight into the personality and mentality of one of the most famous and influential composers of classical music. I came across his poetry recently through a pretty random assortment of events. First, I went to the Hofbräuhaus. House. For those of you who are a bit confused, I'm currently in Munich, and the Hofbräuhaus is a very, very famous Munich brewery. As with most everything I do, I afterwards went home and looked up the history of the Hofbräuhaus. I'm that kind of person. Scattered among its extensive history, I came across the fact that Mozart himself spent quite a bit of time at the Hofbräuhaus. Not only that, he himself states that he was only able to compose Idomeneo, an opera, an opera I love and have previously sung the quartet from, because the Hofbräuhaus beer that he drank so often gave him the fortitude to finish the piece. Whether this is true or not is highly debated, not the least of which is because People don't tend to be at their most hardworking when drinking beer. But considering the fact that the piece was commissioned and premiered in Munich, I don't see why it couldn't have been. Anyway, he told this whole story about composing a domine in the Hofbräuhaus House in this poem called Among All Cities. A highlight of it includes these lines, which are obviously translated into English. The beer there really pleased me, and the guests never ceased to amuse me. Having recently been there myself, I can agree with his sentiments. Mozart's poetry ranges from being quite serious to extremely vulgar. What at first read might be taken as a comic poem is actually a very serious ode to his dead pet starling. He canonized the bird and its fantastic musical abilities right after he buried it in his backyard. So sad. He actually even wrote a piece based on the melody that he and the bird would sing to each other. For the more vulgar side of his poetry, let's look at a line from a poem he wrote while he was in Worms in 1778, which goes like this. Tonight of farts there is no lack, which are let off, forsooth, with a powerful crack. And on Monday I'll have the honor, egad, to embrace you and kiss your hands so fair, but first in my pants I'll shit, I swear. Oh, and by the way, he wrote this poem for his mother. Yes. His mother. Mozart was so prolific during his brief lifespan that we tend to think of him as being very diligent and hardworking. However, in this same poem to his mother, we get a slightly different view of his work ethic. In another part of the poem, Mozart describes how he has been so preoccupied with his diarrhea and exciting adventures that he hasn't composed a single page of music in a week angering Elizabeth Wendling, the German soprano that he was writing the role of Electra in Indomeneo for. In later musings, Mozart would himself agree that he definitely enjoyed himself too much while he was in Munich, um, sentiments by the way that his father shared, who quite often described his son as being lazy. Really though, in that one year he was living in Munich, he not only composed Idomeneo, which is a huge scale operatic work, but he also wrote three piano sonatas, an oboe quartet, and several other vocal works. I don't know about you, but that seems like a lot of work to me. So lay off, Papa Leopold. Perhaps another thing that we can learn from Mozart's poetry is that he really enjoyed potty humor. In a letter to his cousin Maria Anna, he wrote, I wish you good night, but first shit into your bed and make it burst. Sleep soundly, my love, for into your mouth, your arse, 
you'll shove. Real mature Mozart, or should I say, manure. But apparently, Mozart was not alone in being so obsessed with anal activity. German folklore, folk songs, and even just general speech has long been associated with such words as Scheiße, which means shit, and Arsch, which means ass. Although, to be fair, most Germans didn't write an entire canon called Leck mich im Arsch, which translates to lick me in the ass, or colloquially today, kiss my ass. As you can imagine, people have pulled some pretty extensive conclusions from his writings. For example, a theory came about in the 1990s that Mozart might have had Tourette's. You can see that, especially with the words of this next poem. If I am gone, I'll have the bad luck, instead of a letter, to get some muck. Muck, muck, ah, muck, sweet word. Muck, chuck, that is too fine. Muck, muck, suck, au oh charmant. Muck, suck, that's what I like. Muck, chuck, and suck. Chuck, muck, and suck, muck. I'll leave you with that to ponder over. Full text of that poem and that delightful poem he wrote to his mother will be below. For this video, we've been listening to a sampling from Mozart's Idomeneo. And if you learned something or if you enjoyed yourself, please give me a thumbs up and share amongst your friends. Until next week, I'll be the Zen.